Hey, everybody, how's it going? You guys are welcome to start your videos if you'd like. Be glad to chat with you guys instead of just talk at you. Sarah, good job. Priya, you did it. You're for, I can tell. So other people can do it. You can do it like Priya. Just start your camera. I can talk with you. Sharon Jote? Okay, good. You guys can start your video and be like them. So the whole goal this time is to help you guys survive, thrive, and not cry in your first year after dental school. One of the keys to being successful is your communication skills just as much, if not more than your clinical skills. So I've had the honor of presenting so many times on Zoom, 10 people to 100 people to 500 people, to new dentist, to medium age dentist, to season age dentist, to dental students. And I will share with you that leaving you with stuff right off the bat that you can use in your patient interactions is so key. So I've made this video and it shares with you how to communicate with patients. You go to dental school to be professionally weird. Dental school does not teach you how to talk to patients, but it does teach you how to say some weird things. So I encourage you when you get out there in the real world of dentisting, people are, going, are not going to trust you because you look young and you don't know what you're doing. And they're likely right because you look young and you don't know what you're doing. But what you can do is inspire confidence in the words that you say. The words that you say influence the success of your day. So as people are coming in here, I have a favor to ask you. Priya, you're really good at getting people to show up for stuff. This is great. There's this, I, this is way more people than I thought was going to be here. So I'd love if someone else besides Sharon and Priya started their videos. But I'm going to ask you a question. It's an easy one. It's all about you. What are you doing after graduation? Are you going to be a private practice associate dentist, ESO associate, GPRAGD, specialty program, or retire and become a high level break dancer? So, whichever one you are going to be, please type it in the chat. And it would be great to tell me what state you're going to be working in and where you're going to be next as we watch this video. Did your dentist say? Can you hear it, Priya, or no? Does your dentist say words to you that make you feel weird, scared, and afraid? Well, it's not your dentist's fault because they went to dental school. And in dental school, we are taught to talk really, really weird. You may have a hygienist as well. She's also taught to talk really, really weird. My name is helping dentists and hygienists everywhere not talk weird. So I've come up with five words you should not say in a dental office. Five words that will make your patients feel scared, feel weird, feel afraid, and make you unlikable. So what are these five words? So we're going to go through, don't say this, say this. The first word is fail or failed. There's no reason we have to look at a patient who've had, who's had a bridge in place for 20 years and say, Millie, your bridge has failed. It's unlikable, it's mean, and it doesn't even make sense because cars don't last that long. So instead of failed, how about we say this? Hey, Millie, it's time to replace your bridge. So don't say fail, say replace. What's next? My personal favorite, the one that makes you feel so weird on the inside when you say it. If a tooth does not have a filling, we are taught to call those teeth virgins. Does that make you feel comfortable to hear the word virgin? Instead of saying virgin, how about saying tooth without a filling? This tooth doesn't have a filling, not that it's a virgin. The third thing is save. We often say to patients, we can't save this tooth. So dramatic, like it's private premolar Ryan and Tom Hanks is coming to save it. So instead of that, say, hey, the cavity here has gotten so deep, we cannot maintain this tooth. So to review, don't say fail, say replace. Don't say virgin, say tooth without a filling. Don't say save, say maintain. We have two more. Informed consent, so dramatic. I'm gonna give you an informed consent for a root canal. Now, what could you call an informed consent? A heads up. I'm gonna give you a heads up what can happen. So you can have an informed consent form where it says informed consent, but as you bring it to life for patients, say, I'm gonna give you a heads up. Most of the time, things go really, really well, but these are some things you should know about your procedure. I'm gonna give you a heads up, whether it's a root canal, scaling and root planing a crown. And the final one is the P word. Do not say this P word. And that P word is policy. No one likes to hear that word. You don't like it, I don't like it, and our patients don't like it. So you may have a financial 
policy where everyone pays before treatment. That's cool. But instead of saying policy, why don't you call it protocol? So don't say policy, say protocol. So these are the five words you should not say to be less weird and more likable in the dental office. Don't say fail, say replaced. Don't say virgin, say tooth without a filling. Don't say save, say maintained. Don't say informed consent, say heads up. Don't say policy, say protocol. If I can help you in any way, just reach out to me at dentalnachos.com. It is my life's goal to help you talk less weird. One of the biggest problems that dentists face is finding the right job after dental school. Dental school does not teach you how to interview, how to figure out if this job is the right fit for you. Dental practice owners, they don't know how to find associates to unlock more growth, more free time with their families, how to find another dentist to help them do what they do in their dental offices. My name is Paul, Dr. Nacho Goodman. I'm the founder of Dental Nachos and Dentist Job Connect. I wanna share with you that Dentist Job Connect is solving the biggest problem in dentistry, bonding, dental pun intended, dentists together to share in the joy of full contact arts and crafts on patients that don't wanna be there. That's how I describe dentistry. I'm a dentist and I know exactly what that is. Dentist Job Connect is an amazingly affordable and awesome platform for practice owners to list their associate position and have amazing associates to apply through our friction-free and friendly app. There is no cost for the dental job seeker to place their resume on Dentist Job Connect and be found by practices looking for dentists just like you all over the country. So go to DentistJobConnect.com. We have so many fantastic success stories that we're proud of, like helping the team dentist for the Philadelphia Eagles hire four associates in the last 12 months. We can help you too. Share. All right, great. So I want to see in the chat, Priya, what are you doing with your life after dental school? Going as an associate dentist in Dallas, Fort Worth area, Texas. Yeah. How did you find that job? Indeed. Oh, nice. Now tell me what excites you about working there. I have lived in like Dallas, Fort Worth before, uh, and I have like my friend's family and my husband's job is in there. So I have to go back. Nice. And what worries you about being there? Because like it's very saturated and it was like very tough to find a right fit of a job there. And did you now, I, will this be your first time in private practice or working in dentistry? Yes. Okay, so I mean, here so in the United what, States, yes. First time here in the United States. So, yeah, how could I help you feel more confident and your classmates here about going into the real world? What are some questions that you guys wanted answered? I have plenty here in my presentation, but just like when you talk to patients, if a patient says to you, I want my teeth to look whiter but you say you have 90% bone loss, it's important to identify, hey, your periodontitis is a problem, your bone shrinkage is a problem, but you must pay attention to their biggest concern, otherwise known as a chief complaint. So all of you are leaving Penn. So tell me what is one of your biggest concerns, Priya? And anyone else here, there's so many of you, type in the chat one of your biggest concerns for going into the real world. Yeah, like I can go. So like, you know, many of my friends here are like international dentists. So we are all like part of the advanced standing program. So I think the biggest concern like for me would be like the initial transition where the language is like a big barrier, uh, even though like, you know, we kind of know how to speak English, but there are like many different tiny nuances and like, you know, things which may sound a little bit not very agreeing with the patient. So I would say like communication with the patient is like a huge, huge thing for us, I would say. Communication is key. Excellent. I think that's an awesome, awesome one. Anyone else wants to put in the chat some concerns they have? Not understanding how we're getting paid and time management. So one is people remember the first thing that you say in the last. So this book here is called To Sell is Human by Daniel Pink. So if you take a picture of me holding it, the Cell is Human by Daniel Pink. It is one of the best books when it comes to communication with people, moving people forward. And I encourage all of you to get it, listen to it. I'll put it in the chat here. The Cell is Human by Daniel Pink. Because your concern, Priya, which is a reasonable one about communicating with the patients, 
And I hear this, but many of you, if you don't have experience doing something, you don't know what to expect. You don't know the good parts, the challenging parts. So there's a people in the office that you should be more concerned with communicating with than your patients. Patients are important, but these people are just as important to communicate with well, make sure they, you, they know what you want from them and vice versa. Make sure they're on your side. Does anyone know who those people are in a dental office? And it's not the patient and it's not the owner of the office. Office manager is one. The number one for associate dentist is your dental assistant. Dental assistant, someone put it in there, great Rosemary, dental assistant. So how can you connect with your dental assistant? So I'll give you guys so many, I'll give you guys a recording of this. You can watch it anytime. And the things that I want to go over, but this is most important, what Priya brought up. So when you come into a dental office as a new dentist to that practice, and you want to bond together with the dental assistant that's been there, they will be worried you're going to change things. They're going to be worried that you don't trust them. So a really good golden nacho tip that will help all of you. And when you say this, you'll remember this moment and you'll say that guy, Paul, Dr. Nacho was right. I'm 46, or 46 years old. I graduated from Penn in 2002. If none of you were born in 2000, so if one of you was not born in 2002, please don't bring it up in this moment. And that is, hey, I would love to, sh I would love for you to show me how you do things here. I would love for you to show me how you set up for a composite. I would love for you to show me how you review a medical history with the patient because I want to learn from you. Now you're being honest and honest and you're evaluating what they do because there are some things that are non-negotiables in working together with a dental assistant and it may cause uncomfortable conversations it may ca cause, or you may need to say, no, that's not okay. That's how, not how we do it. What's something that you would need to step in and say, no, this is not okay if your dental assistant did something? Number one thing. So when my associate wanted to come to work for us full time, I asked her when she went for her observation day. So I'm going to throw so many different things at you. I'm going to give you guys resources to watch this. If you wanna make sure you get a job that does not make you cry inside, do this now. Go into the chat and text the, the letters WTF to 215-798-9897. What does WTF stand for? We all know what that stands for, but that's, I have a different version for you. Why these fail. If you want to avoid why these fail associate positions, watch my video, take a look at that checklist of what you should be looking at before and during your job interview. When you go there for the first day, I will share with you, it is key, critical to observe at the practice before you say yes to a job and have a dental focused attorney review your contract. If you do not observe at the practice before you say yes to a job or do not have a dental focused attorney review your contract, you are putting yourself in the path of potentially crying inside later. Now, you guys can ask me questions at any time, just raise your hand or unmute because my whole goal, you guys are here, you guys all know how to raise your hand. There's two options, A or B. I could teach you how to live your best dental life so you're as happy as possible or I could teach you how to avoid total disaster and avoid crying inside every day when you get in your car and go home from your associate job. Who here would like to learn, raise your hand, how to avoid total disaster and crying inside? You can only pick one, raise your hand. I know you guys can use that, the raise your hand feature. Who would like to learn how to live their best life and be happy all the time? Some of you wanna do that. Well, the information is exactly the same. But have any of you raised your hand, told a patient that they should do something in their mouth to avoid a problem like bone loss, their tooth breaking, an infection? You've told the patient this and they ignored your advice and didn't do it. Who in their two years of seeing patients have had patients ignore their advice? Raise your hand. That's 100% of us. 
So how do you motivate people to do something? So in this chat, and you guys are all friends, raise your hand if you already have a disability policy signed and ready to go for your first day after dental school. Who has a disability policy they have signed and ready to go? Anyone here? Anyone raise their hand? There's 29 of you and all 29 of you should be raising your hand saying yes. So some of you might be thinking, I won't get disabled. Nothing will happen to me. So I could share with you, Priya, you should have a disability policy so that you can protect your family and protect your career. And that's like when we tell patients, you should get a night guard to protect your teeth. Not everyone is motivated by that, but this might motivate you. During the pandemic, a brand new dentist called me and said she could not afford her rent and she thought she was going to lose her apartment. She could not afford to pay, pay for the food that she needed every month because she became disabled as a new dentist and she did not get disability insurance. Let that sink in. She, I still know her now, will likely never practice dentistry again, has not practiced dentistry for a few years, and she did not have disability insurance. So the time for you to get disability insurance is today. You have taken out loans, you've invested time, you have invested energy in your career. And if you get a disability insurance policy today, if she had gotten one as a D4 dental student, she would likely be able to make fifty dollars to $60,000 a year tax-free, which is kind of like the equivalent of ninety dollars to $100,000 for the rest of her life if she had had someone tell her what I am telling you to do now. So I can tell you all about jobs and I can tell you all about how to pay back your loans, but protecting your biggest um, asset is so important. So all of you to apply with a disability insurance sponsor, text D4 to 215-543-6454 and apply today. One of the challenging parts about disability insurance is that if something has happened to you, you've injured your shoulder, you have a past medical history of a problem, you may not be able to get it or you will pay more. So the least expensive policy you can get is today. I hope I've scared and aware someone here in this chat to take action so they can avoid being like this real life dentist that I know that makes zero dollars from dentistry, did not get disability insurance and is struggling financially. Back to your jobs and the things in the chat. Time management and how to get paid are two things that are so key for success as a new dentist, a new associate dentist. Let me talk about, well, before I talk about this, this is an interview I did with a 2023 grad who collects $105,000 a month as a brand new practice owner. He took an implant course as a D4 and he opened up a practice from scratch where he does implants and root canals, and he has so many patients that he doesn't know what to do. Now, stories are so important. So even though this new grad is so successful, I would not have chosen his career path because the practice that he opened up right after dental school is in, is in a small town in Minnesota, one that he's from. But what this should inspire you, this story, how this story should inspire you, is there is a new dentist just like you doing amazingly well for his patients by paying attention to the right things. I am not encouraging you to move to a rural location. I myself would not do that. That would not be for me. But one thing that's accurate is the more geographically flexible you are with your dental career, the more opportunities that will come your way to do more dental work and to be more financially successful. So two people, they didn't, they, they Anam Sukanya is here. I know more, I can see more of you guys. I can call on anyone. Why does a patient in the middle of Minnesota, Priya, trust a brand new dentist to do a root canal and implants on them when they, that a, a patient in Philadelphia, Center City would not trust them? Why do you think a patient in Minnesota trusts a brand new dentist out of dental school to do endo on them? That's their yep. only option. Yep. You are a hundred percent correct. He will tell you in that video, if you text recording to 215-798-9897, I will send you this whole video podcast with him. 
he will say he has invested in CE, he has invested in learning dentistry, and the patients trust him because they have no other options. They may have to travel two hours to get a tooth extracted. And I want to tell you guys, that's a high pressure way to practice dentistry. I would not be comfortable in that situation where I had to do as much as possible on each patient. Back to how you get paid. Who here, just type yes, but I have some people with jobs here. We got people with jobs to my other, other screen. We have people going to Montana, Florida, California, Dallas, Texas, North Carolina, California, Philadelphia. So whoever's coming to Philadelphia, make sure you stay connected with us. PA, type yes if the job that you have is offering you a daily safety net guarantee, a guaranteed salary. Just put yes or no if you want. A guaranteed salary no matter what. So I'm really glad to see these yeses because that means that the those practices are invested in your financial success. I have two associate general dentists and they have safety net salary guarantees. And what that means is I know I need to keep their schedule full to meet those guarantees. So I'm really glad to see that. Now, type yes if you had an attorney review your contract before signing it. An attorney review your contract before signing it because there's always a chance to learn. Yes, yes. So the number one cry inside thing I get is a new grad saying, hey, Paul, I'm working for this practice. It's not going well. I want to leave. I can't because I signed a 90-day termination notice. And I said, which attorney allowed you to sign a 90-day termination notice for your contract? And they said, the attorney, I did not hire a dental-focused attorney. So what do you think the number one reason is a D4 or GPR grad does not hire a dental-focused attorney to review their contract? Since I've been doing this for many years, you can guess what that number one reason is, or I can tell you, has anyone seen the movie Bridesmaids? <clears throat> In the movie Bridesmaids, Kristen Wiig comes up from the back to first class and says to the people first class in the, in the plane, help me poor. So many dental students, Priya, say, I don't have any money to hire an attorney. I can't afford an attorney. And my brother's 40th birthday party in Miami, I was up early. The guys were still sleeping. I had a coffee. I opened up my phone and I got a DM from a new grad in Philadelphia that had like 27 lines and she was being asked to do illegal and immoral things by the dental practice that she was working for. And I said to her, why did you not have a dental focused attorney review your contract? And she said, I couldn't afford it at the time. And I said, two things. One, if you don't think you can afford it, ask someone for money, take out a credit card, pay the $750. It's that important. But two, I don't want to keep just picking on Priya. There's other people here. I want to show, let me see, show the, I want to see the other people here in this. I want to show my other non-video participants. Muhammad, I see in here. Mudita. I take out my phone and I go on Instagram and I go, is this you in Cancun? Are they giving out free trips to Cancun now? So I encourage you to have a fun life. Go to Cancun and get a dental focused attorney to review your contract because it's one of the number one causes of crying inside, not having a dental focused attorney review that contract. And how you get paid has to make sense. Most of the time, it's some type of guaranteed salary and production or collection incentives, but a percentage of production or collection bonus incentives. So I gave a multi-day lecture this weekend in Philadelphia. So you guys are awesome for being here. You should be proud of yourself for being here, okay? And I know it's a long day and I know you have a lot of stuff going on, but you should pay attention to this right now because it will help you very much. If you're taking notes, I highly recommend that you use your iPhone you go to the notes app, you make a title that say Dr. Nacho's lecture, remember these things and write these down. Before leaving your dental practice each day, get your day sheet printed out and make sure it's correct. Get your day sheet printed out and make sure all the procedures are correct. You don't wanna accidentally bill out a procedure that wasn't done. And on the other side, you don't wanna get paid for something that you did. I will share with you Awesome people here in the chat. Harsha, Priscilla, Mustafa. 
This is something you wouldn't know unless you were me. So I was an associate dentist at my dad's practice back in 2004 and 2005. And the way practice management software works is it's always trying to give credit to the main provider in the software. So if Priya works for me and she is a, my patient for a crown and she completes the crown and she does not check her day sheet properly, it's possible that the office manager or the front desk person unintentionally will build a crown out underneath me. And then if you're paid on collections, when that patient goes to pay for that crown, they will not pay underneath Dr. Priya, they will pay underneath Dr. Paul, and you will lose that money forever. So who have I convinced to not leave an office without checking your day sheets to make sure it's right? Raise your hand. Have I convinced everybody here to do that? No? Priya, why won't you do it? You will do it. But sometimes you need to give people more reasons to do something. So who here would one day thinks they may want to become a dental practice owner? Just put me in the chat. There's 31 of you. Who here would one day want to own a dental practice or might want to own a dental practice? Okay. Thank you for doing the me's. There's enough for me to give you golden advice that no one else will tell you, but this is so important. So number one, to make sure you're paid correctly, make sure your day sheet is right. Oh, all these me's, practice ownership. You guys want to, so if you guys want to make sure I'm here to deliver resources for you, put learning in your ear, big Gary V fan, learning by watching is limited, learning by reading is limited. Put it in your ear when you're on the treadmill. Text how to to 215-543-6454 and you will get back a five-part video series on how to buy a practice with success. How to work with a broker, accountant, attorney, fine practices. <laughs> but when you go to a bank, so I am like so impressed by your commitment to this, Sharon. You do not have to have your video on while you're walking through the streets. You Maybe someone else will put their video on. Anam, is this the time you're going to put the video on? Rosemary, maybe it's your time to put your video on. Gorgeous Prius here by herself. Mudita, you got like the cheat code. You got your, your, your photo on there. But when you go to get a loan from a bank, they're going to ask you to show a history of your production, a history of your production. And if you were working for me, Medina or Mudita or Cecilia, Annalise, Nushin, I apologize if I'm not saying anyone's name properly. Do you think you would tell me the first day you started looking at practices and you wanted to leave me? as an associate, do you think you would tell me the first day or you would wait until it was further along? Just put in there, tell or wait, tell or wait. You work for me, I'm a nice boss. You wanna look and get your own practice, tell or wait, tell or wait, okay? Wait, 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 and that's normal, okay? It's normal. My associates are looking at practices, I will encourage them and they wanna be practice owners, great, but they don't need to tell me the first one that they look at. But when the bank says, hey, Dr. Priya, for us to give you a loan, we need to see a history of your production. Well, because you listen to me and you have Priya to thank, she's the one who put this together for you, you're going to have a little binder of it to show the bank. Because if you went into the office one day and said, hey, can I have all my production printed out from the last year? You think I would know something's up, Priya? You're just like, hey, could you just like print out every one of my production sheets from the last year? you're gonna tell on yourself. So my hope is over the past few minutes, I've explained to you how valuable it is to audit your day sheet, check it, save copies of those. Make sure you're paid, the way you're paid in a dental practice is easy to understand. And if you've signed a contract without having a dental focused attorney review it, why do you think I should still, you should still have pay one to look at it? You sign one and you go, oh, I missed out. I didn't get a chance to have someone review it. Why should you still pay them to do it tomorrow? I don't want to, want to guess. Even if you signed a contract, because the goal of a dental focused attorney 
is not necessarily to negotiate the points of your contract. It's to make you really aware of what you've, you've signed. So I don't want to scare anyone, but if someone has signed in a contract in this chat without having a dental-focused attorney review it, there's a high chance you've signed one that if it has a 90-day termination notice and you don't give them that notice and you leave after 30 days, you might have to pay them $1,000 for every a day for every day you leave early, which would be 60 days, $60,000. So if you go into the chat right now, and Pri, I can text you all these text codes later when I'm done talking, you will get a list of people on my burn list. And what does that stand for? People will help you not burn your nachos. So if you text burn to 215-543-6454, even if you've already signed a contract, and you're saying, oh, geez, I got a bad termination notice. I don't know how I'm getting paid. My restrictive covenant's nuts. I signed it. I would still pay an attorney to review it for two reasons. One, they'll make you aware of what you've signed so you know what to expect. And two, I'm not advocating anyone bail on their job. Just make sure that it's a job that you still want to take. So I'm going to go over time management in a second, but would anyone else like to ask a question right now? I'm here to give resources. You should screenshot this. I put four hours together on what to ask on a job interview. And one of the things that I'll share with you, good, bad, or indifferent, it seems like in my Instagram stories and my Facebook polls, 50% of associate jobs don't last one year. So that means if there's 30 of you here and 50 of you have, associate job. 30 of you have associate jobs, 15 won't have them a year from now, and you'll be going through this process again. And also, if you want unlimited access to our on-demand CE to help with communication, clinical skills, time management, just text CE to 215-798-9897. How many days is ideal for termination notice? Between 30 and 60. Between 30 and 60. 60 at the high end, 30 at the other end. That's my opinion. 30 to 60 would be ideal. Any other questions you guys would like to ask at this time before I move forward to the next slide? So I have a question. It's eight o'clock. It's a Wednesday night. I just did a big event, so I'm a little tired, but I'm excited to be here. Does anyone feel like, man, I'm a little more engaged watching this Dr. Nacho guy than I am on normal Zooms? Anyone feel like, oh, I'm paying attention a little bit more than I normally do, right? It's all a trick, guys. It's all a technique like a crown prep. All this speaking thing that I've done for years, I've studied it. I practice it. I know it. So one of the things that you do not want, please write this down. When you talk to patients, it's a dialogue, not a monologue. When you talk to patients, it's a dialogue, not a monologue. And what I'm doing now is so hard. The only person I can see is Priya. I don't really know you guys. I'm sure we connected on Instagram, but I'm making you feel like I'm talking to you. And what is key, especially with new dentists, consistent check-ins with your patients, consistent check-ins with your patients. Would you like to take a break? Even if they're, even if you're running behind, hey, would you like to take a break? You need a mouth break? I want to check. How's everything feeling for you? Are you feeling anything when I'm drilling? Because I want to make sure you're as comfortable as possible. I want to make sure you're as comfortable as possible. I want to make sure you're as comfortable as possible. I want to make sure you're as comfortable as possible. Even though my daughter finds that to be annoying when I tell her, it's time to get your backpack on. It's time to get your backpack on. It's time to get your backpack on. When you reinforce important things, it goes into people's minds. So someone said, what are the pros and cons of a signing bonus? Really good question. The pros of a signing bonus, extra money, okay? Extra money. The cons of a signing bonus are if there are, if there are requirements, like you have to stay for a year and someone gives you $10,000 and you go and spend that $10,000, and you don't stay for you and have to give it back, you might be like, oh, geez, I spent it. If I was a D4 or GPR grad and I got a signing bonus, 
I would put it in an account. I would not touch it until the requirement period's over. I would put it in an account and not touch it until the requirement period's over. So if you must stay for a certain period of time to keep it, make sure you're fulfilling that. What is the best way to request the practice share their daily collections or what an average associate makes to get a daily idea? Such a great question. So I go over these in the interview thing. Please text interview to 215-798-9897. So it's a really good question. And when I interview anyone about anything that I know, I can ask questions to find out if they know. Okay, so it sounds like one of those Socrates things, but I'll explain to Mudita. So I'll be you on an interview, and I'm thinking, oh, this is going pretty well. It's a nice office. It's where I want to be, blah, blah. But I want to know, like, what are the daily collections or what does the average associate make? Great thing to ask. And honestly, if you just ask, what does the associates make here on average? That's okay. But sometimes it can come off abrasive. I'll give you an example. Having kids is important to you as it was to me. And it would be a deal breaker for me to get married to someone who didn't want to have kids. If I went on a date and I sat down and we ordered a glass of wine and I looked across the table at someone and said, do you want to have kids or not? Even if they wanted to have kids, Raise your hand if that's probably not the best time to ask it. The first second we sit down and get the appetizers. Raise your hand if you think maybe that's not that likable a thing to do. So I'm trying to help you guys. So what you should do is, this is really valuable advice. Every interview you go on, you should have a notebook of this size. And you should say, hey, I want to just take a few notes when we're talking so I can make sure I can keep track of everything. And then over here in the notebook, you have the questions that I told you to ask in the interview that you can remind yourself, okay? So would you like to know? So listen, I know this This is fun. My wife's back from her, her thing, so I have extra time. I won't try not to keep you guys well past an hour. We can do a set part two of this. So whenever you're teaching someone something or communicating with them, it's a dialogue, not a monologue. You're asking questions, you're checking in. So even though I want to get back to this question about what's the best way to ask or what they make, I've thought of something that I don't want to miss. And this will happen to you with patient interactions. So do you want to know the most important question to ask about your associate job to determine how often you will cry inside as a brand new dentist and a brand new dentist of the practice? I want to share with you I am here to help you no matter what. You don't do a GPR, I'm here to help you. You do a GPR, I'm here to help you. You do a, don't do a GPR, and then you realize you want to learn surgical skills, you want to go back and do a GPR, I'm here to help you. But I'm not here to sugarcoat things and make you feel good at 844 on a Wednesday night, and then three months from now be like, man, that guy didn't tell me the full truth, okay? So what I will share with you is, even though I know some of you are advanced standing students, and I know that's awesome because you've done some dentistry, your brand new dentist who are brand new to the practice, your brand new dentist who are brand new to the practice, your brand new dentist who are brand new to the practice. So if I hire someone who's done a GPR and has three years of experience, they are newish dentists with experience that are brand new to the practice. So being a brand new dentist plus sign brand new to the practice equals the most difficult situation to be in. So would you like to know, raise your hand or type me, the most important question to ask to make sure you don't cry inside being a brand new dentist, brand new to the practice? Who would like to know the answer to that question? Who would like to know what that question is? A few raise hand, good. That question is, and you must ask this on every job interview at some point. I give you the whole list of questions to ask, by the way. I'll interview at Dr. Priya's office. Touch. Hey, Dr. Priya. Lila. I really have appreciated you know, your time here, getting to know you. I have a question that would help me. This is it. 
How often will I be the only dentist in the practice? How often will I be the only dentist in the practice? How often will I be the only dentist in the practice? I had the opportunity to work as part of a group practice, but in 2011, we bought a satellite practice. And on Thursdays, I was a solo GP in the satellite practice, and it was very stressful. And I had graduated dental school eight years ago. So how often will I be the only dentist in the practice is a very important question to ask now. And I want to tell you guys in the most caring way, no one's paying me to be here. I love doing this. But one of the reasons that you should listen to me is I am not invested in the outcome. So if 10 of you don't get attorneys to review your contract, and you experience pain financially and morale-wise. Priya, if 10 people here don't get an attorney, how does my life change? How's mine different? Not different at all. And those are the best people to ask advice from. So if you want to buy a practice and your mom wants you to live near you where you grew up, and it's a state away, she's going to give you biased advice. And that's normal. I've given my kids biased advice my whole life. My daughter says... I want to go to college in California. I go where the earthquakes are, Daphne, not where the earthquakes are, because I do not want her selfishly to go to cal college in California. But right now, guys, none of you are related to me, and I have no invested interest in the outcome of any of your lives other than striving to be someone to help you in this moment. But my life's no different. If you're the only dentist in the practice over 50% of the time, it's going to be a brutally difficult year after dental school. And let me share why. You have to take care of things inside the operatory and outside the operatory. You have to determine emergencies. You don't have anyone to ask questions to when the patient's acting crazy in the chair. If you can't get the tooth out, there's no one there to come in and help you. So it doesn't mean to bail on the job. It just means to really be aware of how challenging it is to not have another licensed dentist working with you. It's challenging for me now. If I was going to work tomorrow and my brother wasn't there and the associates weren't there and I had to do everything, it would be challenging. So I'm just telling you, it's a key point. Back to asking about the money on your little notebook. What I'd say to Dr. Priya is, a question that I have that would help me, use help me all the time. Help me is great. It makes people feel bad for you. When you are working with your dental assistant and you need her, him or her to set up faster, don't say move faster. Don't put say, put this out quicker. Say, hey, would you help me and help us by instead of doing this thing in the lab or upstairs, getting our room started so we both can be done on time? Would you help me? Okay. So I would say, hey, Dr. Priya, a question I would have that would help me is what did the last associate that worked here, what did they collect on a month most of the time? What did they collect a month most of the time? A practice owner that knows their practice knows the answer. I will tell you that my associates, if you were replacing them right now, collect between forty-five and sixty thousand dollars a month. If they say, I don't know a lot, no good. If they say $20,000 a month, not very good. If you're taking over for an associate dentist with a full schedule, you would like to hear that they collect between forty dollars and $80,000 a month. Anything outside of those ranges can be a challenge. Why would you be worried? Penn D4s, who one day you're going to be D15s, one day you're going to be my age. But if you are a D4 coming from Penn, why would you be worried if the previous associate collected $100,000 a month? Why would you be worried? You would have to match up to work. their expectations. Yes. Can you really match that? Very difficult for any dentist to do. So if they say our last associate made five hundred grand a year, collected $120,000 a month, it's a red flag to someone right out of school. Ask them what they did to collect that money and see if you're comfortable doing it. So, hey, what did the last associate collect on average per month? Here's a question. So I run Dennis Job Connect. 
And the way I explain that is like we're a babysitter service for dentists because the most important people in my life are those two there from a few years ago. And anyone that comes to take care of my children are taking care of the most important things in my life. So that is a huge responsibility that I do not take lightly. So an associate being a babysitter, huge responsibility. So the reason I say Dennis Job Connect is not a dating service because most people don't have eight or nine boyfriends or girlfriends at the same time. It's a little strange. I will take eight or nine babysitters in my life now. I probably have six or seven. We got Fran, we got Kate, we got Brooke. I freaking got a whole lineup of babysitters to get me through life. So if one of my babysitters was interviewing for a full-time nanny job with us, it would be really smart of her or him to say, hey, could I talk to one of your previous babysitters so I can make sure I'm the right fit for you? So this is some very advanced stuff that most people don't get from my face. They might get it from my videos. They might get it from my blogs, but you're getting the energy behind this. If you went on a date with someone and said, before I go on a second date, I would like to talk to your ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend, you would be a crazy person. Nobody would let you do that, okay? But that's not finding an associate job. An associate job is a babysitter job. So if someone came to me and said, hey, Paul, this office seems great, but I would love to check in with your previous associate so I'm make sure I'm the right fit for you. I love that question, Priya. I'm, I know you're paying attention. If anyone says, oh, no, I, I, that didn't work out or it was complicated, it's not a good sign. And then, guys, if someone says, you can't talk to my associate, Dennis, not because I don't want you to, because I've never had one before. Why is that a red flag? Mohammed, Mauritania, Mustafa, why is that a red flag if they've never had one before? Orange red flag. The owner has no experience working with other associates. So, 100%. Uh, I mean, I'm not judging anyone and it, life is life. But let's just say you were going on a date with someone at the age of 32 and you're like, this is my first date I ever went on my whole life. We're going to get wine and calamari. I'm so excited. You'd be like, geez, this person has no idea what it's like to date. It doesn't mean they're not going to be a good fit for you. It just means if they've never had an associate dentist, they don't have the experience. Really, really, really good point there. So when it gets to time management, I encourage you to text the C number and get really, 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 really efficient at these procedures. Really, really efficient at these procedures. I am a general dentist who owns a practice. I do a lot with implants, but, oh, sorry. <laughs> But what I do just own practice a lot with implants, crowns, fillings, crowns, fillings, implant crowns, single tooth extractions, and hygiene checks. Hygiene checks, crowns, fillings, single tooth simple extractions. Get very, very good and take CE. We have many on our platform for free. I encourage you to invest in hands-on courses especially the single crown and the class two and class three composites because those are the procedures that the owner is going to need you to do and is the patients are going to trust you to do. I will share with you for time management. I have a very funny meme on this. Maybe I can tag pre in it later. Why are dentists who are new so slow? Why are dentists who are new so slow. When I hire an associate dentist, why are they so slow? Why does it take them so long to get through their day? There's two reasons, and I'll be surprised if someone gets the number one reason. Anyone want to guess? Adapting to the new environment of the office. That's very close. Self-doubt is a really good one, and that's one of, one of the challenges. Dental school messes with your self-confidence, so take courses that help you with your self-confidence. I like that, but you're really, that's a really good answer because you're as close as anyone got. Usually they say the owner dentist is faster. The owner dentist has done more procedures. And that's number two. Anytime you've done more than something, I don't know what you guys do. I don't cook anything. So maybe you guys are great cooks. You invite me over. I'm going to be slow as can be. But think about if your friend was really good at cooking, just as good as you, 
and you invited them to make dinner in your house, they'd be slow because the, you, all the cooking utensils would be new to them. So for you guys, every patient is new to you and you must develop relationships. So it's a very big part of managing time expectations and making sure you're asking for enough time from the team, because if the owner dentist does a filling in 30 minutes, don't try to be like them, ask for 60. I will tell you a true story. There's only one person in the history of my dental career who has ever said, I finished a procedure too fast. So I wanna share with you, if you tell a patient it's gonna be 60 minutes and you take 45 minutes, you're a hero, Rosemary. If you tell a patient it's 45 minutes, and it takes 46 minutes, you're a slow new dentist who doesn't know anything. And none of that's your fault. In a very funny way, because I've been teaching managing expectations my whole career, I used to work until eight o'clock at night when I was a new dentist at my dad's practice. And a very nice, I was maybe 30, and probably she was 30 or 31. And she was a newish patient. And I called her Priya. And I said, Priya, we're going to do your filling today. And we have you scheduled from 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. So it's 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. and be friendly. So as I was doing it, she was a good patient. I was done at 7.31 p.m. to my knowledge. As I was sitting up the chair, I was so proud to tell Priya that we're done with this torture. And I said, Priya, we're done. And she looked at me dead in the face and said, can you take longer? I have a new baby at home. This is my only break of the day. So just to let you know, the only people who want to stay extra in the chair are stressed out new moms, but everyone else is thrilled when you're done faster. Another piece I want to share with you guys is if you went to Elvez, who's been to Elvez? It's one of my favorite restaurants in Philadelphia. Please go before you leave. I'm sure some of you guys have been there. If I said table A, you'll get the same food and the same friendly service as table B. Table A, same service as table B. Same food as table B. But table A takes 30 minutes and table B, you'll get out of here in 60 minutes. None of you are signing up for table B. And that's you. You guys are table B. You're the friendly people who are trying their best to do a good job. One time when I had a new associate dentist from Penn, Dr. Lisa, Early in her career, the older patients there would be like, why is she taking longer than you, Dr. Paul? And I used to say, I think because she's trying to do a better job than I would. And some of that was true. It was a joke. But sometimes she was trying to do too good of a job. So let me tell you this next and what I had to tell Dr. Lisa back then in 2018. Dental school messes with your mind as to what should be what the patient should get for them to be done. So I always say, get to good first. Get to good first. When you do something, a crown, a filling, something, get to what's good and what you would be satisfied if the dentist left you with. If you spend too much time trying to make a PPO class three perfect on a 79-year-old, and even though you're trying your best and you try to make it excellent, let's say good is 38 minutes and excellent is 62 minutes. Who gets really upset if you try to make it excellent? Who gets really upset with the extra time you go from good to excellent on a class three composite on a 79-year-old? Who loses confidence in you? Not the patient. Who's going to cause you problems intentionally or unintentionally if you do that too often? Employer. No, Interesting. No. Worst owner. I might not even know about it. I probably am just distracted. Maybe I know about, but these people. Assistant. You know, assistant, assistant, yeah. assistant. Assistant and front desk. Assistant and front desk. And also, just so you guys know, depending on what's charged. So I had to talk to one of my associates who did hygiene. And she goes, Paul, I want more time. We gave 60 minutes for a profi, exam and x-rays. We had an assistant. And she said, Paul, I, I need more time. And I was like, okay, if I give you more time, I'm going to pay you less. It's like, well, I don't like that. I said, well, what if I give you twice as many profies and you do them twice as fast, I'll pay you double. She goes, well, that's too much. I don't like that either. And I said, how about you figure out how to get done in 60 minutes? She goes, I like that. So one of the things is everything you do comes with a cost. So a three-hour crown prep, an impression and 
a career of crown prep impression and temporary is just not built into the cost of private practice dentistry. So do everything in your power. And I'll share with you, there's an amazing course we have from one of our sponsors, Right Global, that will teach you about prepping, scanning, inserts faster. And remember, it's better first, faster second. But if you text fast to this number, it's a 60 minute C course by Dr. Michael Frazes, a Right Global sponsor. And he breaks down every part of a single crown prep. And that's what you should be doing. Breaking that down so that you're as efficient for you as possible. Always do a good job. Always do something good, clinically acceptable. As we kind of wrap up and I can take some additional questions, this slide is your entire life. So you're sitting here as D4s, but one day you're going to be D14s. Are you going to buy a practice, start one from scratch, buy one? You're going to hire an associate? You're going to, how are you going to sell your practice? These are the four biggest decisions you will make throughout your dental career. Invest time, money, and effort learning them. I did a GPR at Albert Einstein back in 2002. I believe I made like $45,000. And if I went to private practice, I probably could have made $100,000, let's say. If you're going to private practice dentistry without doing a GPR or AGD, my treatment plan recommendation is that you spend at least $10,000 on CE your first year out of dental school. CE that helps you communicate with the patients better. CE that helps you with procedures you can do like hands-on extraction courses. I want to share this in the kindest and most real way. You just invest, invested $600,000 in a dental degree. It's not the time to be cheap. It's not the time to be cheap. So figure out a way to keep investing in learning that matters. Free YouTube CE is not going to be the learning that really matters. Online is great for awareness, in-person for action. What are my thoughts on not being offered a contract? I really like that question. I don't like it. Why don't I like not being offered a contract? And the reason I don't like being offered a contract is because what practice owner doesn't yeah, value their associate enough? to create an agreement of what, what they should expect. So it is nice not to have a restrictive covenant or termination notice, but would you hire an associate dentist for your practice without giving them a contract? I talk, we're talking in a vacuum here. I run Dentist Job Connect. We have 2000 resumes, 300 jobs. I talk to people daily. So if you're someone who only has a good job opportunity in Tallahassee, Florida, with a no contract job, I'm not telling you not to take that job. I'm just telling you to be hyper, hyper aware of the pros and cons and not having a contract to me shows an, a laziness on the part of the owner that I don't love when looking for a job. Great question. Please answer more questions. There's a few more I'm gonna go through at the end. I won't keep you much more than 10 more minutes. So all this stuff is pretty heavy stuff, right? Priya, you're not going to get paid. You're going to get disabled, blah, blah. So why don't I like sprinkle in some positivity? So every dentist, the only way to be successful is to get someone to say yes and then be able to do the work. Get someone to say yes and then be able to do the work. So I just want to let you know, being able to do the work without the patient saying yes, meaningless. So if you remember one thing right now, to sell as human by Daniel Pink, work on your communication skills just as much as your clinical skills because you can go to a fancy C course on how to do veneers, but if no one says yes to veneers, you never get a chance to help anyone. So here's one of my patients. Took me multiple years to get them to move forward with implant dentistry. Let's see how it turned out for her. Okay, guys, we're here with Dr. Ahn and Janice, one of our favorite patients who just got her new implant overdenture. And Janice, could you pop that out for us to take a look at? So these are on the upper. Nice nails, Janice, I like them. <laughs> Good, and can you show us that there? Nice, so it's U-shaped, there's no palette, not like this denture over here. Traditional denture, which we have given Janice as a backup, but the advantages here are that there is no palette, doesn't cover the roof of the mouth, snaps into place, and you can pop it back in for us, Janice. Awesome, and what are you gonna have for your first meal with your new implant uh, denture? Nachos? 
Pizza. Pizza? I like that too. <laughs> All right, thanks, Janice. So what I would like to ask you guys is really quick, put in the chat, what word describes her emotion? What word do you think? She happy? She glad? Smiley, tell me about what that, how you, what, how you think that patient feels. Relief, proud, able to eat. So I want to share with you, maybe this will inspire you because you got a lot of debt, a lot of challenges. I mean, I'm here to be real. Like I'm here with you guys on a Wednesday night. I absolutely love this. I could do this till midnight, right? I love this. And I love being real. Being a dentist in 2024 has a lot of challenges if you want to pick where you want to live. Let me explain. Being a dentist in 2024 has many challenges if you want to pick where you want to live. Because one of the things I do, and I'll be glad to do it for you guys, they're very inexpensive. I, I do mini associate job coaching sessions. And somebody from Arizona hired me for one. They're like 145 bucks. And we review your job, how you can be success successful, finding a job. It's a lot of fun. If you want to sign up for one, if you think it's worth it, you go to dentistjobconnect.com. So this awesome D4 applied to 20 jobs in private practice and got one interview. And she doesn't want to move out of where she is for due to her family, her personal life. Does that sound like a flexible career? She went to dental school, did everything right, and is graduating and found one interview in private practice and three giant DSOs want to hire her tomorrow. So I want to share with you the key to being successful is to making yourself as valuable as possible, whether you're an associate or practice owner, with getting patients to move forward with treatment. It is a game changer. And it took me multiple years to encourage Janice to move forward. She signed the HIPAA release form. I could say it, Janice, that video, Priya, I don't want to brag. It has 14,000 views on YouTube, a 65 second video of me with an iPhone. Take, get patients to sign the HIPAA release form. I, I will share with you whether you just do this so you can show other patients. All of you at the end of this should text forms to 215 543 6454. I give you my media and photo release form. It is an example. You should make sure it's compliant with all the HIPAA rules in your state. But taking videos and showing patients work you've done on others, not the dumb dental pictures. Seven, nobody needs the occlusal shot. The patient is totally disinterested in that occlusal shot. They're interested in that story. And their trust factor will go up the more stories you can tell them. Because being a dentist is like being the star of a Broadway play that nobody wants to see or pay for. The exact opposite of Hamilton. And you've chosen a profession where you can change people's lives on a daily basis in the most amazing way. And you've also chosen a profession that makes me want to cry inside every day I go into the office at some point. When I talk about crying inside, it doesn't mean I'm crying inside the whole day. But when a patient says, why doesn't my insurance cover everything? Or when I say to a person, can you open for a class two composite on number 15? And they open this much. And I want to say, do you even know how words work? And then I'm shouting to a 52-year-old, open like an alligator, questioning all of my life's decisions. It makes you want to cry inside. So make sure you treatment plan your career. Pay attention to the right people. Build a team. Don't be dentist cheap. Listen to things. Learn from things. Go to in-person CE. The biggest unlock I can give you is to go to as much in-person CE as possible. You will meet people there who can change your life, especially in the area where you want to be. So I just want to see, does anybody want to ask me any questions? It's been like 70 minutes, Priya. Did you guys have any special questions that you wanted to ask before we finished? I'm here. This is one of my concepts, FIPS, friend in your phone. Free is my friend in my phone now. So this is my personal cell phone number. If you just text me your name, 10D42024, 10D42024. I would love to have you as a friend in my phone. I may be able to help you solve a problem. You might be able to help me solve a problem. Could be December 10th. You could be having a challenge in Dallas thinking, oh, I'd like to ask this Dr. Nacho guy what he thinks. I want to inspire you 
I want to wear you, but I also want to responsibly prepare you for this wild, wacky, and wonderful dentisting world you're going to go into. Dental school has a hard job doing what they do. I can't stress this enough. Everything that happens in dental school, good, bad, indifferent, annoying. I want to share with you. You want to be excited for a second? You don't have to take people to pay anymore. Isn't that nice? You just drop them off at the front desk. How luxurious is that? You don't have to set up your own operatories anymore. You have to make sure they're set up properly. You got to make sure the infection control is right. So there's a lot of benefits. But everything that happens in dental school, good, bad, and different, it just doesn't translate into the real world of dentistry. It's different. It's a different speed. It's a different energy. It's a different vibe. Of course, your core skills of preparing teeth and drilling fillings and extracting teeth are, are important, but you're going to be overwhelmed in the real world. So make sure you have people on your side, resources, take care of your mental health, take care of your physical health, reach out to people. And of course, if I can do anything to help you, let me know. This is a really fun 70 minutes. Anybody wants to put one thing they learned in the chat that one thing that they learned in the last 72 minutes that made them think differently or they're going to do, hopefully it's apply for disability insurance. Oh, there's one more thing. So I recently had a C course and one of my favorite people who started following me like five years ago, six years ago, he said, Paul, your nacho sponsors are so helpful, but the best one was student loan planner. Him and his wife had over $600,000 in debt. You text debt to 215-543-6454. You get a discount on a student loan planner consult through Dental Nachos. And I cannot recommend strongly enough. I know they're a sponsor that you do their consult. Do not just try to figure out how to pay off your loans by yourself. Pre, any other questions from your team? Oh, perfect. Yeah, I don't think so, Doc. I don't see anything in the chat. Uh, thank you for such an awesome presentation. I kind of copied all your codes and I'll save with my friends. We'll keep in touch. Awesome, guys. If you guys want to do anything in the future, let me know. If you want to do, you know, a, we're in the real world now type of thing, let me know. I can't express. I spent a lot of time, everyone, putting my dental nachos on demand C platform together. We have we have lectures from Elaine Bylas, a, a 2016 female dentist grad who does composite veneers. We have lectures on crown preps, business. Join it for free for 30 days and just listen to something once a day. Don't just listen to clinical things, listen to communication skills. It's a really just a super valuable way to build your confidence early on. Thanks guys for all your nice comments. I see people saying thanks. Please know I'm your fit. Text me guys. Have a great rest of the day or night.